talking tennis at home. We have a star that will be joining us. Well, before she will join us, you have to see, you know, what she's done, especially at the Lagos Open, the last time we had that event in 2019. We're not three in the studio, right? We yeah, talked about obviously. the star that will be joining us <laughs> in the studio. Barakat, according, it's good to have you join us. How have you been? I've been great, thank you. Mm -hmm. it's, mm. it's great to have I mean, the last time we spoke was via Zoom, right? Yeah. During the, the quarantine, height the pandemic. height of the pandemic, oh, where you'd have yes. loved to be here, yeah. but you just couldn't, you know? Yeah. And then we were thinking the sport festival was going to hold. You know, mm. we're just, there yeah. was a whole lot on how you were, you know, trying to, you know, keep a sane wow. mind, so to speak, physically and mentally, yeah. you know, because of the whole situation. Mm. So how's it been since then? Uh, I remember uh, you, you planned on playing, uh, going fully professional, yeah. pretty much. Yeah, that was our last conversation. How's it been since then? I know, I know a lot has changed because the pandemic is still out there mm -hmm. and it's still a struggle for a lot of sports stars. Um, I went back to Morocco, which is where I live, in January after that talk. <laughs> okay. And so I started preparing for a lot of tournaments. But because of the pandemic, I could not attend most of them. And like I said, I was planning on fully transitioning this year. So I just made some steps about that. So I went to Tunisia to play my first pro tournament since like one year or mm, something. Interesting, that's great. <laughs> it wasn't bad, it was great. And that's why I'm back here to actually prepare for the next set of tournaments. But I'm actually taking it step by step and I'm really excited right now compared to the last time we spoke. Yeah, I know, yeah. I got that feeling because we're like really downcast. Yeah. We have so many plans, I mean, so yeah. many things you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But it's a good thing you played your professional tennis and it was really exciting for you. So we, what are the other tournaments you intend to play, you know, for this year? Um, right now, I'm intending to play some pro titles okay. again. But then the main thing right now for me is to play also in the Fed Cup for Nigeria next month, hopefully, and to also play a few junior tournaments because I intend to play one junior Grand Slam this year, at least, if it holds, because Australian Open got cancelled. At that time, I started the year top 100 in the world, so I was 
I was going to play Australian Open, but it got cancelled. So then now I'm looking forward to other tournaments. Okay. Uh, uh, let, let's quickly let's go back to your debut, your professional. That was in Tunisia, right? Yeah. Uh, tell us about that. Control. What, what was it like, the experience? Uh, how different is it playing on the ITF circuits and now playing, you know, a, a big one like that? Honestly, going to Tunisia, I was more excited about playing because it was like my first time since one year. It's different. It's not juniors. I've won numerous titles in the juniors category, <laughs> yeah. so I don't know how <laughs> tough it is being there and traveling there without a coach or something. So it was really tough for me. I won some matches and I also lost some matches, some painful loss, but I was really proud of myself. So I didn't really take so much negative stuff from okay. there. So why did you travel without a coach? Was there a problem with that at some point? What happened? Uh, it was a problem with my schedule, actually. Okay. And at this point in time, I really have to fix some stuff with my technical team. I, like I said, I live in Morocco yeah. for like for the past five years, something. But then I have to leave Morocco this year, normally, to pursue my professional career. And because lot. of that, yes, I need to actually set up a technical team, which I haven't done okay. yet. And that's why I had to travel alone. Without the coach, well, that yeah. must have been tough. Because sometimes you just need that backing, you know, someone cheering you yes. up, you know, telling you stuff. And every other thing. So you mentioned outside, you know, the ones you talked about the uh, playing the Fed Cup for Nigeria. How is that going? And who are all the players that will be taking part in this one? You sure? Um, so far, I don't know. I'm mm -hmm. actually not feeling so positive about it at the moment because I haven't heard any plans mm -hmm. so far made about it. But I'm currently in Nigeria, so looking forward to that tournament and to the other tournaments I'm planning to play. I always have like two different plans, so in case that doesn't work, <laughs> I'm probably going to go back to Tunisia to play some more. More on a professional tournament. Yes. Uh, okay, so you know, in the, yeah. interesting. interesting. Uh, but yeah, okay. we need to go on a short break. We'll be back. Oh, you know my stay right here in the studio. Yeah, you know, Mubarakat Akhodri, she's still here in the studio. Number one ranked tennis player in Nigeria, of course. The top ranked WTA tennis player in uh, Nigeria. Yeah, Mubarakat, I mean, it's been a journey for you. I mean, people have been asking questions how you started. How it all started for you, you know, why you had to go to Morocco, who sponsored you to Morocco. How are you coping with sponsorship? We know tennis is an elite sport and it can be very expensive when you don't have sponsors. Yeah. Um, I started playing tennis at Little Slum Tennis Club. <laughs> it's it's my club since I was young. How old my, were you then? Four years. Four, old. yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> because my tennis, my family is more like a tennis family. My dad plays tennis, and I have two older siblings that used to play tennis. So I just grew up going to the courts with them, and that's how I picked the interest. And so I started pretty early. Mm. And so I went to Morocco at the age of 12, mm -hmm. yeah, because at that point in time, I was number one juniors in yeah. Nigeria, and I wasn't really getting so much competition here. So my dad preferred me going there, and there I really got competition. I grew as a player and as a person also. And like you said, tennis is a very expensive sport. I have had numerous sponsors. So far, mm -hmm. it's not been something from one man or something. I've had numerous sponsors. I've been trying to... Nigerian sponsors? Yeah, oh, I've been trying to make it work. Mm -hmm. And so far, it's been amazing. Mm -hmm. It's been amazing so far. So far, amazing indeed. You started four years old. You're 18 now. Clocked 18 a couple of days ago, a yeah. few days ago. Uh, so... Um, um, we, we, how would you rate your progress, uh, you know, since then? Um, are you satisfied with where you are in the sport, uh, mm -hmm. considering uh, that your peers, I mean, uh, Coco Golf, uh, Iga Swiatek, you know, all those ladies, similar age ranges, uh, they're already playing, uh, you know, the senior Grand Slams, mm -hmm. they're already very consistent on the WTA tour. Uh, are you satisfied with where you are now, or do you feel you could... Uh, be doing a lot better, um, perhaps, if you weren't born in Nigeria. <laughs> yeah. what, what, do you, what do you make of all of that? I'm just curious to know how uh, you feel. Actually, you know, yes, I do. I do feel that way. It's just a different program there than it is here. I mean, considering here, we have four national tournaments yeah. for the seniors. Mm -hmm. Four national tournaments. Coco at 14 played... U.S. Open, mm -hmm. yeah, World Card. 
that's impossible for me because at 14, I was still playing juniors, trying to play juniors in Africa in most tournaments. So it's like we don't get enough chances. And I'm talking mainly about Africa right now. There ain't enough tournaments to play. We don't get enough sponsors. I was in Morocco, so it's more like I had to follow a specific program with other players there. And we just had to play a lot of tournaments in Africa. But Coco, at 14, had World Cup into numerous yeah, tournaments. So I think it's, it's a lot different, the program there and here. But when I think about being African and how much, how much things I've achieved, I think I'm actually pretty happy about where I am today. Not satisfied, happy. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of things <laughs> has also gone wrong. I wanted to be top 100 at the first half of the year, last year, because mm -hmm. of COVID, that didn't happen. I also had one gap here in my junior career. So I'm not exactly satisfied with what uh, I uh, Top 100, that's uh, for the WTA, right? Genius. Genius, yeah. right. But yeah. for overall, uh, WTA, are you in the top 1,000? Yes, definitely. Nine, where are you? Nine, 900. 900. Yeah. Uh, not bad. No, not bad at all. Not bad, but of course uh, she can still uh, do Yeah, uh, better. better. Are the sponsors really doing enough, you know, when it comes to sponsoring, you know, young athletes who want to go professional? Are they doing enough, you think so? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think I am one of the lucky ones, actually. There are so many players in Nigeria. I will talk specifically about tennis, because Nigeria is known to actually pay so much attention to football a lot more. And so tennis, we don't get enough attention. I've seen so many players actually gone deray because of that because there are no sponsors. Some people don't have interest playing tournaments when you only play four tournaments in one year. And the brands that actually sponsor those tournaments are the Central Bank of Nigeria, Rain Oil, mm. Dala, and Vemp. Mm. When we have so many more private-owned companies here in Nigeria that can do a lot better for athletes generally, but I think they're not fully understanding the concept of sport and everyone's just more focused on football than other sports. Wow. Yeah, uh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. Uh, yeah, that's always a problem. I mean, uh, especially for the lesser sports uh, in quotes. Uh, um, let's get back to you now. Hopefully, uh, these guys are watching and they, uh, they start uh, doing the right things. Uh, back to you. Mm -hmm. How would you describe your, your style of play? Because uh, I tried to check it. <laughs> uh, I, didn't, I didn't see anything about uh, How would you describe your style of play? Uh, as a tennis professional? <laughs> yeah. You know, it just changes technically. Sometimes I'm an old court player, okay. but then most times I'm an aggressive baseliner because I really go to the net. I just yeah. rely on my strokes from the baseline. I've seen that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I wanted to see What's pictures it? of you, you know, train. I've training. I've seen that a lot. I've seen you at the Lagos Open most yes. times, and that's really what you do. And somehow you're able to get your opponent because I feel uh, when you try to go aggressive, I don't know, somehow the reading. I really don't see much of the reading, but that baseline seems to be like a balance. Did you model, you know, your style of play after anyone, or you just decided that this is, you know, the best for me, depending on mm, my opponent? Actually, it's been something I had since I was young. I've okay. always played this way. I've always okay. tried to finish the point a lot quicker, a lot quicker, because... Okay. I really don't like spending so much time on the court. Oh, quotes, yeah. So I prefer going aggressive, and that's why I prefer hard court to clay court okay. also. So I don't know. Sometimes I had to match my game because I, the more I grew, it became tougher. So I had to be more consistent because I know that not everyone is going to become defensive with my attacking shots. Mm -hmm. And so that, those are just a few things that I changed about my game. Okay. Mm. Interesting. I mean, we can go on and on and not yeah, continue oh, this conversation because it's now, kind of interesting. So. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> because, because most people just want to know so much about you. They've heard about you, but they really want to know so much about you. But we don't have so much time yeah. to talk about <laughs> all the things we're yeah. talking about. Okay. Well, so, I mean, okay. Yeah. I mean, time is um, a sparse spent, and uh, we will definitely bring that back um, when, um, let's say, just. Uh, before you go and play. I, I, hope, I, hope, I actually I hope, have one more yeah. thing to okay, say. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, okay. so right now I'm here. I'm number one in Nigeria. Yeah. And I'm also here on behalf of so many other players in Nigeria. Yeah. The club where I play in, there's so many ball boys and people who actually have so much talent and can do so much more. And so this is me being here, challenging private-owned companies <laughs> to actually 
do something for these athletes. Mm. Okay, do something. I mean, the message is clear. Yeah. Just put your money where your mouth is. Thank you so much, Cody, for coming on the program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I hope Thank to see you on court soon. And I hope that the Nigeria Tennis Federation actually listening and maybe the Fed Cup we get to play that. Mm. I don't want to hear no money or anything. Well, thank you, girl. <laughs> thank, thank you, you girl. Very Thank much. you. <laughs>